So now what? We just cut the rest of the frame off? Dude, that thing is sick! All right, so we finished up the last video, getting everything loosened up, getting everything unbolted so this engine was ready to come out. It was a little bit late then, so we just decided to save this for this video. We've got all of our cross members undone underneath the engine, and we think that we have enough space to tilt it and pull it out of the truck. So that's our first step for today, is to get this engine disconnected completely. So uh, we're gonna try to lift it and pull it out and see what happens. It's probably gonna take a little bit of finagling, um, but we should be able to get it out. It is painfully evident that the crash did more to this truck than just wreck the bodywork. The engine is pushed way back into the firewall and we're gonna have to do something drastic to get it out. We decided our best course of action would be to disconnect the cab and lift it. We created this cab lifter <laughs> that connects to a hoist and uh, wanted to test it out on the cab of the truck that didn't mean so much to us before we lifted the Datsun with it. It works pretty well, but it's a little bit sketchy with a truck this high off the ground. I think it'll work a lot better with the Datsun. Now that the cab's back, it's really easy to get to all of the wiring and plugs for the transmission in the engine. And the engine will simply just lift off the frame. Now that we have a little bit more experience with our cab lifter, it's time to lift the cab of the Datsun. We want to be really careful with this because we are reusing it. So we took our time and ended up lifting pretty easily. It's still not the best way to lift a cab. If we had a lift, this would be much easier. But if you don't have a lift, the cab lifter does work. <laughs> this doctor's black now. Hey. Hey. What do you think? She'd be stoked. <laughs> See you later. You want the guy inside and the push inside? Push inside. You got it. All right, so we are officially torn down. We are down to, I guess, everything that we needed to be down to, right? Yeah. Um, what's next is going to be the actual building part. <laughs> so we know we can tear trucks up. Yeah. Let's we'll figure that out. Put them back together. Uh, we're going to leave the cab right here. We're going to try to get as much in on the frame as possible before putting the cab back on. Uh, and then we'll just fit the cab to whatever's left. Sound right? Cut again. Cut again. Really? <laughs> okay. Do we have jack stands? So it is finally time to cut the frame. This is a part of this process that I've been very nervous about, but it's inevitable. It needs to happen if this thing's gonna look anything like the rendering. So the first thing we have to do is jack the frame up and get it to a comfortable working position. We're taking measurements at every single step of this process so we can make sure this frame is completely straight. This is crucial when doing any sort of work on a frame and we're not exactly doing it in a state-of-the-art facility so we're making sure that we take as many measurements as possible so we can get this thing as close to straight as we possibly can on the front support of the frame is not as important for our purposes, so the Sawzall should do just fine for that.
So this is the first piece to our very complicated puzzle. It's half inch plate that we decided to use as end caps for our frame. First, we have to clean the mill scale off of the plates and then they're ready to go on the end of the frame. Again, we're taking several measurements to get these as close as humanly possible with the tools that we have. For now, they'll just be tacked up. We'll come back later and finish the welds as soon as we know that everything is level and perfect. We bought some extra metal so Chase could practice welding the different joints that he was going to need and get his machine set up perfectly for the frame rails. We only get one shot at this, so we want to make it count. We feel good about the machine settings, so it is time to weld these plates for good. Now the tricky part about this frame is that the outside C channel is all one thickness, a pretty standard eighth inch steel, but the inside is much, much thinner. So we've got to be real careful going around the inside of the frame so we don't blow a hole through the frame, but still add enough heat to the half inch plate. Inside of our frame rails, they were like, uh, lots of rat nests, so fecal material and urine built up that I'm burning now with fire. Yeah, so welding plus rat urine nest infestation, not a good mixture. But we do have one plate installed. We've got one more weld to do on the other one. My mask is falling down. And, uh, and then that's good. They are permanently mounted. They're already permanently mounted. Okay, well, they'll be extra... <laughs> I gotta take this off. They'll be extra permanently mounted. And I don't know, how you feel about it, Chase? Pretty good? Yeah, me too. I, it looks really awesome. The welds look great. Chase is doing an awesome job, so. Once this is on, we'll go to widening the front. It is time to widen the front of the frame. We're gonna do this off of the frame itself and then add it to our new plates that we just installed. So I'm gonna prep the weld surface while Chase gets the sleeve machine down to the proper size. So that went like way better than either of us could have ever expected. So what we did is we took some quarter inch wall tubing that was just a little too big to fit inside of the factory frame rail. We ground it down a little bit, got it hammered in five inches on both sides. It is way overkill for the job. We can weld here, put some plug welds in. That's going to be really, really strong. I'm just, I'm blown away that this went this smooth. We're within a 64th of an inch of being correct this way right now. So now we've got to get it this way. We've still got this piece to contend with. It's just another cross member, but it bolts in. So I'm just gonna put a piece of angle on to get this box made. Nobody sold a piece of metal we could sleeve this with. So we're gonna to have to take it off when we're done assembling and build one from scratch. Yeah, and, and this metal that we use for the center is actually double the thickness of even what the factory used. So we feel really confident it's gonna be really strong. Yeah. So the next thing is we're going to kind of get this temporarily boxed like Chase said and then this will go onto the car and we will officially have our new width that is 13 inches wider than the factory. <laughs> 